Coffee Carmen Connection is about being human. It's about you choosing to prioritize your well being, putting the time in to strengthen your resilience to adversity, and being part of a community that holds you accountable and offers support when the going gets tough. Our podcasts bring expert insight and real life experiences together for you to enjoy and learn what it is that makes us human and how to work with it. Good afternoon, Ian. Thank you for um, joining us on Coffee Calm and Connections podcast. It's lovely to have you here. Hi, Sarah. Glad to be with you. Well, it's been a while since we've, uh, we've seen each other, haven't it? A couple of years now, I think. Yes, yes, okay. that's right. I, I must admit, I do pine for those uh, walks in the, at lunchtime that we used to go on just to get to and escape from work. Do you know, I think of that quite often. I try to keep up with the, the lunchtime walks and I don't always, but no, that was that was good times. Okay, so what I would love, if you're happy, is just to introduce yourself to everybody listening, a little bit about your background, uh, who you are, and just say hello. Okay, yeah, sure. So um, I'm Ian Elliot. I live in uh, in Colgashaw and uh, I've got two grown up children, been married for 30, 37 years. And um, my situation is that I've worked in insurance pretty much all my life since the since the early 80s, uh, started kind of at the bottom and worked my way up. All the time I've worked in a broken environment. But I guess that um, working for a number of companies. But I guess the, the, the thing that really has, um, has, has affected me over the last few years is the fact that, uh, you know, the difficulty in, in the working environment from the point of view of how companies are, are looking more closely at uh, the financial aspects and reducing staff. So, and um, you've actually, um, you've had a number of experiences in a relatively short space of time that are, quite stressful experiences i wonder if you might uh, talk us through the last few years and sort of timeline and what's what's gone on sure yeah yeah i mean in fact actually uh, just to kind of backtrack on that a little bit that i actually had um, three periods of redundancy and the first time it happened to me was uh, was many many years ago when i had when my my two children who are uh, one's 28 and one's 30 were actually um, uh, were still only toddlers, and one of the things that really struck me, and I, I always remember it, is the day uh, I drove home to tell my wife that I'd lost my job uh, with a, with a month's notice, and I can remember thinking, uh, coincidentally, I was driving past Braxton Park, which is where you and I used to work, but um, I can remember thinking to myself, you know, how am I going to tell Sue this, and. You know, we got through it. I got another job and, and carried on. But um, you you mentioned a couple of uh, occasions that have happened more recently. So uh, I would say over the last three years, I've actually been in a position where uh, I was made from Dundon from one job, uh, a company called Pound Gates, and uh, a month's notice, and then uh, started uh, after uh, the time when we were together at Consul, I started another job at um, Stackhouse Poland and uh, uh, was also found myself redundant again so it's one of those things that I guess that reflecting on it what I looked at was my position when I was when it happened to me many many years ago when my children were young comparing it to how I felt this time when yes of course there are a lot of stresses and there are a lot of worries but you know now I'm now I'm 50 odd years old and a bit and the stresses are completely different that's quite interesting because you're right the, the the different stages of life make quite a big difference in terms of the way this impacts you. Can you talk to us about the early days and what your sort of main it's interesting you say like oh, how am I going to tell Sue did you how did you tell her what was her reaction? I just told her I just told her but it was just the kind of thing that went through my mind because you know when at that time she was at home looking after the children and you know I was was the main provider and I guess you know most of my career I have been the main provider but that was a that was a choice not not through any uh, distorted view of the male and female roles but it's just that it was a uh, it's always my position that I, I was in the one that was you know earning the most money so I was the main provider and I guess back in those um, those early days 
uh, not having a, a means of income for us as a family when we were just starting out was really difficult to comprehend. How um, did you manage? Well, I mean, I was lucky in a way in that um, I did one of the things that I did, uh, and I'm the sort of person you probably, as you, you you know from your knowledge of me, that I'm the sort of person that doesn't usually sit around and wait for things to happen. I it happened to me when I was working in the um, at the time I was I got a job at the post office because it was just around Christmas, and um, again it's an experience that will live with me because I always remember that time that I spent. You know, when I spent a month, a month or uh, three or four weeks working in in the post office, you know, packet stamping, loading, uh, loading mail, uh, and, and you know, it's it's a kind of thing that you really remember because I've never done it since. I've never had to do it since, but you know, I I kind of just got my pulled my finger out and got on with it, and and then I got another job where I ended up staying for thirteen years. So you know, it it was. It all went, worked out fine in the end. I can imagine that resonates with quite a few people at the moment because I've seen, I'm probably sure you have too on LinkedIn, one that springs to mind is a, a BA airline pilot who's uh, due to COVID uh, has, is no longer a BA airline pilot and, and has now set himself up as the painter and decorator. So just that resilience, I suppose, um, you've put it as, you know, don't wait for something to happen, just find another way is quite an interesting theme and lots of people deal with that slightly differently yeah as you say they they and I guess sort of looking at it in a different way I was thinking about how that would be you know how I would look at that today and I, I you know when when uh, redundancy hit again about sort of six eight months ago again I considered what would I do? Would I do other? Would I do other job, other things? I was a little bit more fortunate in that um, my contract uh, had a three month notice period, so I, I had a little bit more flexibility. But of course, the time I was looking for a job was slap bang in the middle of a, a coronavirus crisis, and so you know the poor, unfortunate people who work in retail and and, and all those other little businesses that were affected by it. You know, I kind of thought, well, my position, I counted myself lucky because I thought, well. I'll probably find something, whereas retail is in virtually impossible. So, you know, I was really conscious about the fact that I, I felt, I felt lucky that I, I, I had, I wasn't working in that area. Do you know what? What you've just taken me back. One of the things that I used to really love when we used to go for our lunchtime walks was you are absolutely a glass half full person which is infectious, and it's an incredible sort of mentality to have. And I love it. Yeah, I mean, I tried, to, you know, I try to be positive and, um, you know, one of the things, it, which is, is, is the other interesting thing about this whole situation was for many years, I've always, my, my wife was a nursery nurse and then she was, uh, she worked in a, as a teacher assistant, teaching assistant in a school. So she's always had a, a very vocational kind of career and she, you know, people she loved to talk about her job because you know she she had a real passion about it and I never I always felt with my job that you know I, I never I felt passionate about it in the way that I was interested in it but it wasn't the same sort of vocational career as being you know a teacher or a nursery nurse and so I always kind of felt a little bit inferior in terms of my my role and one of the things that I've always talked about is oh, I'd love to do something different, but I don't know what it is. You know, I'm one of these people that I can't think, you know, I started my career when I left school. I didn't know what I wanted to do. And after nearly 40 years in insurance, you know, if I was trying to do something else, I still wouldn't know what I wanted to do. <laughs> my dad always said to me, there are very few people that know what they want to do. The majority of people know what they don't want to do. And that is so true. Right. <laughs> so true. Just going back to, you use the word inferior. Can you explain a bit more what you mean by that? Yes. Um, you mean in terms of my career? Yeah, I, I guess I thought, you know, because whenever we were, we were out socially, to my wife, she would, she, she'd love to talk about her job. And, you know, I just never felt like that. And it, it wasn't because I... You know, I, I say I use the word inferior. I guess, I guess I didn't, I didn't say feel inferior about it, but I just felt 
yeah, my job was just a job. It wasn't a, you know, <laughs> yeah. it wasn't being a nursery nurse. Yeah, that, it, you know, it's it's hard work, but it was, you know, the, she had a certain element of passion about it, and I guess the same about teaching. You know, it was a there's a the end result. Uh, is changing somebody's life and you, you, you don't do that in you know insurance <laughs> <laughs> um, maybe the area part of it that I fell yeah no I just think it's really I think it's interesting because I think that sort of passion for your job or a hobby or life or person or is sometimes quite difficult to cultivate but what's interesting and probably completely separate is regardless of, of sort of the big passion, your mindset is very positive. So in my head, those two things kind of go a little bit arm in arm, but, but perhaps not, but I just, I love, I love the positivity that is your sort of natural orientation. And I've read a book recently on resilience and that sort of gratitude, positivity, uh, proactive approach to life is basically all of the things that it, it's talking about and how to cultivate resilience in, in the face of difficult situations. And you seem to come by that naturally. Question for you, how much of it is natural and how much have you really worked? Obviously, you had an early redundancy and then another two recently. How much did you learn from the first redundancy that supported you through what's happened in the last five years? Yeah, I mean, I think it's, I don't think, to answer the question, first of all, I, I don't think, I'm not sure it's a, it's a learned behaviour. I guess it's just something that I've, I've kind of adapted over, over a period of time. So being positive, you know, it's just generally the way I am. You know, I have uh, down moments and, you know, I must admit being stuck at home and not going out during this current situation, you know, it's probably probably brought me to the lowest that I've, that I've ever been. But, you know, in terms of my redundancy situation, I guess the, the answer to the, the experiences that I gained from that was really that when it first happened to me, I found another job. And it really worked out well for me because I was there for 13 years. The second time it happened to me, you know, 20 or so years later, yeah, it, it was stressful. You know, I, I, I took some decisions, like I had to cancel a holiday that I was about to go on with my wife. I took some decisions, but I thought, well, I'll probably get another job because I was, by that stage, I'd, you know, I'd taken a professional qualification. I had probably the highest qualification I could get in, in in my industry so I always thought well I'm sure somebody will want me for something or other and then you know when it happened again sort of you know 18 months two years later I still felt the same I still felt well somebody's going to want me you know even if I have to take a, a pay cut uh, you know I took some decisions to to make it possible that I could take a pay cut and still carry on with my sta same standard of living. Yeah, that's incredible. Tell me about, um, so the impact of the early days, obviously breadwinner, young children, mortgage payments, going into the foreseeable long distance future, given, you know, age in life and all that kind of stuff versus now, obviously your children are grown up, left home. What was the biggest impact or the biggest worry that you had two years ago and six to eight months ago? What, what was kind of the fear that you felt? Yeah, the, the two big things really are, um, you know, I suppose when it happened years ago, I had a I had a mortgage, but probably it was a smaller mortgage. And we've got to the position with, more recently, we've got to the position where we're getting towards the end of a mortgage, but we still had a mortgage. And I, I'm, you know, I'm, a, I'm of an age where some of my compatriots have, you know, I'm 57, some of my compatriots have retired or they're reducing their hours or People I know, you know, historically have retired or, or reduced their hours. And I just, just financially just couldn't put myself in that sort of position where I could do that, you know, because when you start to do the maths about having a mortgage and how long, how much money you need to cover a mortgage each month, it just doesn't add up, you know. So I couldn't, I couldn't retire. I couldn't really, I took a hit on salary, but I couldn't reduce my salary that much. But one of the things that really um, 
because I say when it happened to me the second time, when redundancy came along the second time, I'd been I'd been prudent in that being with companies for for a number of years. I had I had some money in a pension, and I just said to my wife, "I'm just going to take the money out of my pension and pay off the mortgage," and that's what I've done. And you know, I spoke to a financial advisor about it, and he said, "Well." Whether you've got money in a pension or whether you've got it in your house, yeah, I hadn't been frivolous and spent it on a car. I just took a decision and and it just to make my life easier, you know, and so that something that would really make me worry, that I would really worry about and would really be concerned about and would probably weigh, weigh me down, I managed to resolve it, you know, and I, it hasn't it hasn't cost me it's cost me a lump out of my pension, but. You know, money's still in my house. So when I sell my house, you know, if I found myself in a similar situation, I could sell my house if I wanted to do that in the future. But, you know, so, you know, and I, I felt I consider myself fortunate, but, you know, some of that is down to being, being prudent. Yeah. When you said um, one of the things that would, obviously the mortgage, outstanding mortgage, not being able to retire, the worry that that causes how does that manifest itself in you like what what do you notice about yourself when you go ah I must be worried I'm struggling now yeah I mean it's it's like it's like anything it's not sleeping it's being you know my wife will tell you I can be a moody person anyway (laughs) so I can be moody anyway but it does make me more you know, more snappy. Uh, I don't sleep as well. I can be, you know, one of the, you know, somebody just say, oh, it's all my fault. Take it all on me. Take it all on myself, you know, and and, and kind of blaming myself for something. So, you know, I, I do those kind of things, um, you know, self deprecation, that kind of thing. <laughs> mm, I don't think you're alone in that. I do it on a daily basis and I don't even recognize I'm doing it sometimes. I'm trying to work on that, obviously. But yeah, I think that's sort of a default to to a lot of people. Um, I know uh, we are running short on time. I've got one last question for you. Some of the roles in your recent experience have been sales orientated. And you mentioned before when we were talking about one of them being sort of commission salary predominantly. I also know from our conversations and, and sort of time we've known each other that Rather than sales, your comfort zone, maybe if I'm putting words into your mouth, tell me, is more client relationship rather than out and out new business sales. And I know that you've had a, some experiences where you've kind of moved from the relationship into the sales. And I just wondered how that had affected you as a person when you were in those periods. Yeah, and you know, you're quite right. One of the um, one of my old bosses, he he described me, and, and he put it quite. Uh, you know, it's, it's a quite well known phrase, but he he. He put it like this. He described me as being uh, a farmer, not a hunter. In you know, I'm more of a nurturer of, of clients rather than a kind of go out and, and a spear a client and drag it home by its hair. And I guess the effect that it had on me when I took a position in a, in a kind of salesy sort of role, albeit it was a you know it's it was like like but not like working in the post office i did it for for a role because the role was available and i thought you know and actually at the console where we work together you know the people there are very very supportive and very they gave me a lot of they gave me a lot of uh, latitude in terms of what i did it wasn't a cutthroat sales environment but even so you know i did did find that stressful and i felt more relaxed when I went back into a role where I was looking after clients and not so responsible for, for, for actually bringing clients in, of course, but then we both know that that was a false hope because then uh, Gallagher's then made me redundant because there wasn't enough income in my book because, you know, the person who was going to retire, I didn't retire and took, took a lot of business. So, so it came back to bite me, but, um, but yeah, I felt better about it. So, yeah, feeling better about it. I, I get that 100%. How did it affect you when you were in the sales role before you were looking to leave? Like, did you find that your general persona was slightly different? Could you feel less at ease in yourself or, or did you just kind of crack on? No, I did. You know, I, I think that one of the things I, I, I've always found, and I think that's probably 
having a support system behind me is that I've always found that I can, I can, you know, you mentioned about me being a positive person. I can be positive about anything. So in a position where I'm, where I'm in a situation where I'm, you know, maybe in a learning role or in an area where I'm, I'm not entirely comfortable, for example, going to networking events, which is something that I've been, you know, I'm quite an introverted person. You might not think this, but I'm quite an introverted person and I don't like going out networking, but I did it and it was part of my role and I forced myself to do it. And I became a different person when I was at a networking event to what I might be otherwise. So I kind of had a mask that I would wear when I was networking that will be different. And so similarly, when I was when I was in a sales role, my mask was different to what my role would be if I was looking after clients. So, you know, I, I could slip between roles. That's an interesting concept because I think everybody masks to some extent in everyday life. And, and where, where I've seen before that sort of the mask stays in place permanently is where maybe some additional uh, worries and anxieties come up. So, yeah, I, I think that's an interesting concept. Yeah, I've I've really enjoyed working with you and I really missed miss our uh, our walks and when lockdown finishes let's try and go for a uh, a walk somewhere because it'll be fun but I really appreciate your time today and also your honesty because I think I think it's really refreshing and lovely because you're naturally so positive but it's also I'm really grateful for you to have opened up and sort of given us some insight into how you got there and and you know you've you've had a few knocks and how you've overcome them I think it's really really helpful so thank you Oh, it's a pleasure. Nice to talk to you. You too.